All right, well, happy Sunday and welcome to St. Clair Baptist Church. So it's good to be with you this morning and uh, it's good to always, uh, a day that uh, we've set aside to honor and glorify the Lord um, and need to uh, take take a, just take it as a special privilege. A lot of people would love to be uh, gathered together today. A lot of people in other countries being persecuted for uh, for even uh, gathering in the Lord's name and having to hide and do it, but we're not this morning, so we're very uh, blessed to be able to come out and and be able to uh, worship the Lord together. And uh, just our prayer is that we glorify Him in all that we do. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, we're glad to have you. Glad if you're joining with us on uh, Facebook, social media. There, uh, enjoy you being a part of us. Always it means a lot to us. Um, I've got several announcements to go through, so just uh, listen up because there will be a quiz later. Um, so we'll have, uh, remember, our Wednesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. Uh, and then for this evening, I'm excited to say at 4 p.m. in lieu of our evening service, uh, we'll be having a baptism for Hannah Wilson, and that's going to be at the Rector Creek Boat Ramp. So get with me if you don't know where that's at or somebody. Uh, it's out past uh, Pine Grove Market there and um, out there at a boat ramp and uh, looking forward to that. That'll be at 4 p.m. this evening and that will be in lieu of our evening service. So no evening service here at the church this evening, 4 p.m. Um, and hopefully everybody can attend that. Um, also, there's a prayer breakfast on May the 1st and it's from 6.30 to 8 o'clock a.m. And that's at the First Baptist Church in Dayton and our church has sponsored some tables there. So if you'd like to go to that, get with Villa and she's organizing that. We also have a uh, sign up for the t-shirts. They're $20 each, a little bit more for some, for some of the bigger sizes, uh, like me, and just let Villa know on that as well. All right. And then we have a sign up for, um, uh, a play at the Cumberland County Playhouse. It's going to be, uh, White Christmas. I guess that's in December. <laughs> I just need to know as soon as we can to, so I can reserve a block okay. about how many I need. Okay. All right. So me and Tim are excited to be talking about Christmas stuff, yeah, for sure. Um, then we have uh, vacation Bible school sign-ups, and we've got a board over here that shows the needs and uh, already some people that have signed up. So if you want to get your uh, name on there and be uh, recognized uh, for your volunteerism, that's a good place to put it right there. We prefer volunteers, yeah, that, that pen could, that, that marker could fall in the hands of about anybody. Your name might just show up up there. So check it regularly. Mike, I'm real excited. This, about Vacation Bible School's thing this year. It's God's truth never changes. And uh, the truth comes from God. And all those people are saying, you know, truths can be different for different people. And do what makes you happy. And be a good person, get you into heaven. We know the truth, and that's what we want to right. teach in Bible school, that there's only one way. That's right. And it's God's truth and yeah. one way to get to heaven. So let's be prayerful of that. I mean, it's just about a month away. So if there's something you can sign up in as so many categories as you can get yourself into. Yes, I agree. And that's a, a good sermon topic there, truth. And we know Jesus was the truth. And thank you for that reminder, Barbara, and our theme uh, there. So remembering that. All right, um, then we have uh, a strawberry fundraiser. Does anybody want to speak to that? Maybe that's coming up. Yeah, so we've got the sheets back there for anybody that wants to try to sell some berries for a meat fundraiser. Um, we need to know by May the 7th how many you sold so we can get the berries on the order. Um, and we'll be dipping them on Friday, May the 10th. So um, our youth are planning to come out and assist, but if there's any adults that would like to assist, please feel free to come to <coughs> It's funny, but it's work. So, um, and we've got room for anybody. I mean, if you can just count, you can stack boxes. So, um, I mean, it's a, there's room for anyone. They won't let me and Greg work it. We ate too many of the product there, so. But yeah, it is. It's, it is a lot of work. It's, it's a lot. It's a good time, though, and it's, it's certainly a good smelling event. <laughs> Strawberries and chocolate there. So um, that's been a really good fundraiser for our youth and stuff in the past too. So it'd be a great thing to be a part of. Also wanted to bring up, um, if you were at the last business meeting, uh, our church council had recommended. Uh, 
for Jerry and Janet. Where is Jerry? He's a rascal. He's gone, but that's, that's good. He's not here, maybe. He stepped out a minute. But um, So you, if you were here and you heard Jerry talk about his calling to Sedan, uh, and he had, he had quit his job at Lowe's there, and he's, he's gone into that just trusting a guy to take care of him. And Janet works there as well. But uh, they are supported by donations and missions in our church at the business meeting. Gave them a $500 um, offering there, love offering to them donation. Uh, but we also set up an avenue of being able, if you wanted to write a check to the church, be distributed. I'll let Connie talk to that briefly so I don't mess it up. <laughs> you wouldn't mess it up. Wouldn't have messed it up. <laughs> So we'll be, we've got some envelopes in the foyer for them, and uh, be praying about it. There, uh, if you've heard them talk about Sedan, that's a great, uh, that place reaches out to a lot of other states, and for those inner city uh, kids and things, that have got, uh, been doing it for decades and do an outstanding job out there, so uh, be in prayer for how God might lead you to help with that. All right, do we have any other announcements at this time? set aside the, in the ladies uh, Wednesday night class their thoughtfulness of putting that together and, uh, and have that shower for the care center so alright any other announcements okay so looking at birthdays are you having birthdays this past week Nancy does Nancy had birthdays and Lisa and Lisa this Lisa this Lisa two opposite sides of the room anybody in the middle <laughs> no <laughs> Look at him. He ain't moved. You talk about a poker face, buddy. Hate to use the word poker in church. Maybe if money's not used, it's not wrong, but I mean, just stone face that there. <laughs> so, Wilson, Lisa, Nance. All right, let's sing Happy Birthday, Friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. What about anniversaries this past week? Any anniversaries? No? No anniversaries? All right. Moving right along. What about our scripture readers up at this time? Or up? Oh, yeah. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. told us about the truth and the only truth that we have and Paul's writing that was 
his last book, writing from that dungeon before his death and uh, preaching to carry it on, not stop, right? Thank you for... All right, as we think about our prayer requests, we've got the printouts in the foyer, but I do want to read um, read through our current ones that we have here. Uh, we've got uh, Thelma Wood, remembering her with Surgery Tuesday. Mickey Orrick, uh, praise for my dad, Wendell Jolly. Uh, remembering Loretta and Ronnie, and, and Ronnie not feeling good today. Uh, David Edwards, um, Melissa Goins, family of Rebecca Foster, uh, Michelle Jolly with procedure on this Tuesday, Sally Harshbarger, Vacation Bible School, uh, Nora Elsie, Terry McClendon, Josh Pelfrey, <coughs> Carrie Dunworth, Harold, uh, that's Harold and Sue's granddaughter, Kevin Lettner, Praise, Johnny Reed, uh, Grover Parks, who's in Memorial Hospital. Hannah Wright with Upcoming Travels. I think, it, yeah, that's got us current right there. So we'll like to add or anything we want to add or update to our prayer list at this time. Right. Who is? Nova LD. She's there. Okay, got one over here. Well, I got to just thank everybody for all the prayer and stuff. I went this Friday for a uh, scan on my chest and I ain't heard nothing back on it yet but I gotta go to the tent for a PET scan of my lung and then I gotta go to the cardiologist and then I gotta go back to my doctor's my lung doctor so just keep me in prayer and pray, and pray for Lisa too yeah sure thing Mickey so pray for you and all of that and having that supportive wife by you and uh, and I know, yeah, she'll be supportive because she's brought that up in prayer many times. So. All right. And we can pray for Lisa to be that supporter, right? <laughs> All right, anything else? Uh, Michael that I work with, yeah. uh, that has a heart attack. He's officially back to work now, so we will awesome. come back Monday. Great. Alex's friend, Ashley Gold, still needs a lot of prayer. You figured out on the meaning there. All right, thank you, Stella. I also have an unspoken request. Okay. Have any other unspokens in the house? All right, so remembering our unspoken. All right. Can you mercies for my sister and her husband back home? So we get see that, that family that Lisa's so fond of and gets so excited when they come again. <laughs> We appreciate you sharing Lisa with us too, so quite the blessing. But yeah, I pray for safe travels for y'all. Good to have you with us today. Any, anything else? Uh, yes. Uh, Mar, Matt's country, you know, October 20th, right? I've been there, I think it's about 12 years I've been there. So tomorrow's 12 years? Wow. Good plan. Yep. Yeah. You still haven't run you off yet, have the code? Nope. <laughs> All right. All right. We're good. Uh, Carrie has had the biopsy on her uh, thyroid, and uh, she hasn't heard the results yet. From it, so we keep her in prayer. All right. Good. Christopher, you want to open us in prayer for please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for letting us all be able to gather here safely. Thank you for a beautiful day to be able to be in your house and hear your message and spread the love that you've given us. Please help everybody that we put on the prayer list, and also thank you for all the praises that's been able to come across that prayer list. None of it would be possible without you. And please let everybody uh, continue to love you and spread your message. In your only precious name. Amen. All right, right? Read a red book today. 
Start off with 78.
song for us at this time. Would like to come up? Yeah. All right. Thank you, John. that we have in that song right there. Anybody else have a song for us? All right. Come on, bring Lisa with you. you?
worth right there coming out this morning to that. That's awesome. We sang that song Wednesday night before we had our uh, for our banquet there uh, shower for the care center thong. Uh, thank you, Miss Hanson. Anybody else have a song for us? Ansley reminds me of a statistic in, we had in Sunday school this morning. Yeah, we got time. <laughs> uh, how many in here are between the ages of 18 and 29 this morning? I knew you'd raise your hand, Michelle. Put it down. <laughs> and, and Bella, too. So, right. golly, boy, Jim, this middle section. I don't know. <laughs> raise it one more time, 18, 29. All right, wow. Wow. So statistics in our Sunday school show that that age group that we're raising in church typically don't come to church anymore. Only a third of them do. We've got a very good representation this morning. So, hey, let's give them a hand. That they haven't found something more important in life. And as I was thinking about this, God said, Mike, share your testimony. I kind of really want to share that. But I was out of church for most of those years for me. Uh, so I had grew up in church and it just, I was out. I wasn't real happy on the Sundays when I was out. I felt that tug, but I found more important things to get into. Um, and I'll tell you what got me back in. It's crazy how God works. One Saturday evening, uh, there was a guy driving in front of my house. I knew him from high school. He was a big fisherman. The crappie were biting. And I was like, hey, I'll get him to go fishing with me in the morning. This is Saturday evening. And I was like, hey, how you doing? He's like, good, man. I said, fish biting? I, said, I hear they're biting. He goes, yeah, they're biting really good. I said, let's go in the morning. He goes, yeah. He goes, ooh. No, no, Mike. He said, tomorrow, Sunday, I'll be in church. I'm not going fishing tomorrow. And God took and just smacked me like that. And that got me back in church. It's crazy how little things like that work. Um, so, you know, putting off things that were very important. So, uh, in baptism, as I think about that, Hannah, I put that off for about 20 years. Uh, and, and the story of how God tugged my heart one, one morning at the old church up there. I had come in, a guy at work, he would sing, shall we get the, at the river all the time at work. And I came in one morning at the old church and I said, when I do decide to get baptized, uh, this is the song I want sung there, which is typically what people sung anyway. And that morning after we got through shaking hands, George Cunningham walked back up and we never done songs right after that, by request anyway. And he said, we've had a request this morning to sing Shall We Gather at the River. And I'd already looked that song up when I got to church and God was like on a megaphone and tugged my heart and I went up. A couple more people got saved that morning. Uh, I, I made my confession there that I want to be baptized, and that's how God works. So that's my story. So we think about all this. Uh, God has a plan for each and every person, and listening to his voice, uh, even if it may be something through going fishing, uh, may be the way to get your attention. It did me, and so I've been thankful that he didn't give up on me through all that. So, all right, Brother Jim, I'll be quiet and let you have your uh, way with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. It is good to see you this morning. Glad you're in God's house. What a special place to be. This morning I want us to think on the thoughts, temptation to victory. Scripture we'll be looking at in portions of out of Colossians 4, 5 and 1 Corinthians 10 and 12 verses 12 through 15. Reminders. Temptations. They're warned about from Genesis on. Uh, in the very early part, we see that uh, what happened to Adam and Eve and the temptations were there. They were there. And I was thinking this morning as we were uh, looking at, the, I was thinking about this thought and listening. Uh, temptations, uh, Kurt read about, we like our ears to be tickled. We could probably text the sermon with that this morning. Temptations, they're around us. But we can overcome temptations and we hit the victory that Connie and Deanna was talking about. We shall rise again. So it's a reminder of what we are. Uh, temptations, even Jesus was bothered with temptations. Um, Satan began his attack in the wilderness. Uh, that scripture that we're looking at uh, uh, Later on, it talks about that in Luke 4, 1 through 13. But we are told that after Satan came and tempted Jesus, he was challenging him, that he left him for a season. It's a reminder to us as believers 
it goes on to say that over and over again, he returned. We know he returned to him when he was feeding the uh, 5,000, uh, when he was doing some of his healing. Satan was there. Paul writes several times about temptations, how we're tempted. James also writes, he says, uh, consider temptations joy, knowing that testing will produce endurance. And the writer of Hebrews 4.15 reminds us, we have a high priest in Jesus who has been tested in all things as we are and is not sinned. Jesus understood it. Did he not teach us when he taught us the Lord's Prayer to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil? He knew what was coming our way. So this morning, I want to think for a few moments, how do you deal with temptations and the trials of life and what's going on around us and what we see? Seems to be a uh, kind of a popular thought this morning. I was listening to two different pastors preaching this morning and both of them were talking about the temptations, what we deal with in our world today and what's going on. Jesus knew before he ever went into the wilderness what to expect. He knew he was going to be challenged. He knew that in his three years of ministry, Satan was always going to be there, always around him. And so he lived in continuous preparation. What does that mean? We're told by the writers of the New Testament how much time that he spent in prayer, talking to the Heavenly Father. Many times they would talk about that before they ever got up, he was gone. He was out talking to the Heavenly Father. Jesus knew he needed that power if he was going to face those temptations. But he also used something else. He used the scriptures. We know that in that Luke 4 through, uh, 1 through 13, uh, as he talks about it, that he had been constantly studying the scriptures. Do we not, are we not reminded at the age of 12 when he went to the temple with his mom and dad and he got left behind? When they came back, they found that he was in discussion with the rulers there in the temple. They were amazed at his knowledge. Even as a child, he was learning, he was studying, preparing for those temptations, what would come along. And so when that day as Satan met him in the wilderness, after he had been baptized and gone in, when he asked him about, Jesus, turn these stones into bread, he was able to say, Thou shalt not live by bread alone. When he challenged him to go to the top of the temple and jump off and uh, the angels would take care of him, he said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Quoting scripture each time. And then when he told him that if you'll bow down, I'll give you all the world. And he said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God alone. Jesus knew his scripture. He knew what was going on. All of these things. And so... He constantly was using them, expanding them. He was able to reflect every attack from Satan by the scriptures. So what does it remind us? Do we not need to make that a part of our life? Is not preparation critical for our faith walk and what we do and our preparation? Paul liked to compare our lives as Christians to athletes. He said... You've got to get ready for the competition that's coming. You've got to be preparing. He talks about the race. He talks about the box. He talks about all the different things. He says preparation is vital to us as believers. Preparation in life. When you stop and think about it, I was reading something that Billy Graham had said. He reminded that a master craftsman works for years to achieve his goal, to get ready. When I was still in Kentucky, I got interested in antique furniture. And we had one of our guys in the church that was, he uh, was a furniture builder. He could take the 
antique furniture and uh, make copies and all beautiful stuff. And he asked me one day, I said, Jim, come out here. If you'll come out and work with me, I'll turn you into a craftsman. And I said, how long will it take? And he said, it'll take several years. And I thought, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that kind of preparation. But as a reminder of who we are and what we're about, we do have that time for preparation as believers, to prepare our lives, to know how to walk, to know how to live. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection so that as I preach, I will be qualified to speak. What powerful words. What's it saying? If we're going to take a stand for Jesus, we need to be qualified in our life. Be ready. Be able to do it. When we talk about salvation, we need to believe fully in what's happened in our lives, what's taken place. When we talk to people about what Jesus can do, we need to know and understand that. We need to talk about that in our living Paul was reminding us we're to discipline ourselves. Our time, our eyes, our mind, and our body for Jesus. Every part of us needs to be prepared and ready. So how do we move on with that, moving from temptation to victory? Answers are found in biblical experience in what took place in that time. Psalm 119, 37 says, Turn your eyes away from worthless things. And then it goes on to say, Preserve my life according to your word. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. As I read that, studied it, thought about it, I thought, you know, it almost seems as the psalmist knew about the internet today and what it is. Because how much trouble we can get into fooling with the internet. How many lives are attacked? How many lives are ruined and destroyed by finding things that can ruin our lives, can devastate us? When I was still working with the convention there in Mississippi, uh, we were constantly dealing with the issues that ministers were having and what was taking place. What caused it? their eyes, what they were doing. They became addicted. They began to look. They began to explore. And they were destroyed by We lost two to three ministers a week. They were destroyed by what they were looking at, what they were doing. So the psalmist was wise when he said, turn your eyes away from worthless things. You know, used to, when I was growing up, it took time to get in trouble. You had to go look and search and uh, find. And uh, If you're going to deal with uh, junk, uh, you had to find a uh, store somewhere and most of those were hidden away to find trouble. Now it takes your finger on about three or four clicks. And what kind of trouble can you get into from the junk that's on it to the comments that are made about uh, worship, about false gods, about false ideas. The psalmist was saying, be careful. Watch your eyes. And as Kurt was reading to us this morning, and watch your ears. What tickled your ears? Uh, I still remember when I was about probably 17, I was down at our preacher's uh, house. I was a new Christian. was in there talking with them. And I remember his wife, and she was, had something on the television, and she said, did you hear that? They said a curse word on television. Can you imagine a day and a time when one curse word on television would upset you? Did you cut yours on later? It's whether it's the news, it's whether you're watching a movie or anything else. It's always there. Marlene loves the old movies made uh, 1930, 
1940, somewhere in there. It's amazing when you watch them and look at them. What's unique about them? They're clean. They have clean topics in what they're doing, what they do. We barely today have gotten so used to the things around us, or our eyes and ears, that we ignore it. We get caught up in what the world says. I learned many years ago as a young minister, uh, whether you're dealing with youth or whether you're dealing with adults, there's one thing you can get in trouble with real quick. Don't tell people, adults, that they don't need adult entertainment. The first time I got in trouble, I was dealing with youth. And I was had a youth adult meeting together for them to discuss and for them to share their ideas and what they would like uh, their parents to do and what the parents like kids to do. And one of the kids said, I don't think it's fair for adults to say, you can't watch this. This is adult entertainment. We watch it. And, you know, I was young enough to say, honey, I agree with you. There's no such thing as adult entertainment that we need to be watching and what's around them. And from then on, I was professed to be a heretic by the adults because what they wanted to do. They didn't know that the psalmist many years before me had said the same thing. Watch your eyes. Watch your eyes. What the writer was saying, build your life around biblical things. What the Bible teaches. In other words, if you want a life that's headed to victory, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Third thing to remember. Remember that victory is in our grasp. Philippians 4.13 Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What does he say? There's power in our walk and what we do, how we live. Paul was saying, Jesus set an example. He had been exposed to far more than we will ever see. And he won. He was able to overcome all things. He's saying to us, if we walk with him, we can have the victory also. We can do the same because he set the example. What's victory? It's living with him. It's learning how to walk with him. What to do? How to be able to say, I know that one day I will arise again with him. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Kind of explains it in detail as Paul is writing again to the people of that day. Uh, re really in uh, the 8th and ninth verse are where he really comes out strong in what he's doing. Uh, he says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Powerful words. All of these are about living like Jesus. These things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. What powerful words as Paul is saying. He's saying, I have gotten to the point that I can live in such a way that if you watch me, see how I live, what I do, you can understand what it's like to be like Jesus. Have you ever stopped, looked at your life, and said, Lord, am I doing things 
that show that I have been with you, that I live with you, that I walk with you, that I understand what's important. It's developing our lives around His Word, believing in His Word, understanding in His Word. We as believers can never obtain victory in our lives to be with Him by denying, by denying that the Scripture and what's there. It amazes me how major denominations around us today who have been strong leaders in reaching out for Christ today say, well, you know, a lot of that there we don't have to practice anymore. It's from a time gone by. We don't have to live that way. The last time I checked and read what we're told in our scripture is this word is eternal. It doesn't change. It doesn't last. Just because we want our lives to be different and walk in a different way. Can I come out and say that? Can I live that way? And the Lord be all right with it? So I was thinking of reading that scripture from Paul. It reminded uh, me of a song that Peter, Paul, and Mary some years ago. Some of y'all remember it. Where have all the flowers gone? Where have all the flowers gone? But the key verse in it, as you look at it, when will they ever learn? What a message for us as believers. When we, will we ever learn? Have we forgotten as we study our scripture? And I know many have forgotten because we see the demonstrations today. Have we forgotten that the Jewish people tried to mold things into their way away from God? And what happened to them? God said, you're my chosen people. I love you. I'll direct you. Walk with me. They looked around them in the area they lived. And they said, but these folks have different gods. And I kind of like what I see there. And they began to follow them. And God reminded them several times, if you continue this up, your nation will be destroyed. And God kept his word. Because of their unbelief, because they're turning back on God, God destroyed their nation. What does it remind us? It reminds us that we as a Christian nation that was developed that way have turned our backs on God. If we continue it, God will turn his back on us. And we don't want that. We don't want it to happen. So what about victory? If you want to know about victory, look at words of experience. Someone that's been there. Someone that's done it. Second Peter 2.9 says, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Peter knew. He'd been there. He'd been caught up in it. All the way that he thought it was all over with. But he says, I learned something. The Lord knows how to take me and deliver me. Have temptations. If we don't, uh, we probably are fooling ourselves. They're always there. But Peter says, you know what? Walk with the Lord and he'll take care of them. I think that people were saying that day, the reminder of where the victory lies. Victory lies in walking with Jesus. How much we love to sing that song, Victory in Jesus. What he says to us, and what that song says, that the one thing that brings us total victory in life is living for him, living for Jesus, walking with him. This afternoon, we're going to have the excitement of being with Hannah as she's baptized. And what is that? It's a symbol of victory. She made a profession of faith long ago. But when you're baptized, 
It's your testimony. Hey, Jesus is my Lord, and I want everybody to know it. Victory is when we as believers can say, Jesus is my Lord, and I want everybody to know it. So next time, probably be sometime today, that you get tempted by the devil, just think, devil, head out. I have victory because Jesus is my Lord. Let's pray. Father, as we come this morning, we come thanking you that you sent Jesus. You sent him to bring us victory over the temptations of the evil that Satan throws before us. He's always there. He's always tempted. He tempted Jesus as he walked here. He will tempt us until we're with you. But Father, we know what we have. It's above all things. The power of Jesus through the Holy Spirit lives in us. And he can't throw temptations that we cannot overcome. Father, I pray this morning that we stop and we think and we say unto you, Lord, help us. Help us when the temptations come. Pick us up, deliver us, and may others see Jesus living in us. I pray this morning if there's anyone listening or anyone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that hadn't taken that step, this would be the morning that opened their lives to you. They'd come and say, Lord, come into my life. I want to be your child. Bless us now during our time of invitation. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand together.